Attention gamers! Imagine a situation where you play a ranged top laner because you are a poster child for pro-choice only to be met with the cold reality that the enemy top laner has had just as little care love and sex as you in life and now it's a battle of the turbo virgin ranged top laners. But you pick this champ because you can't win an even battle so normally when you celebrate turning 3 by unfairly bullying some silver garen main, this time you've met your match by some tit milk monopolist whose cringe emotes are making it worse. You're forced to dry hump your own statue because you know damn well the second you try to join a midget convention, their leader will be front flip delivering a greeting card from annoying bullshitsville immediately. It's becoming apparent that you only played a ranged top laner because you don't have the skill to play a real champ and being a victim of this many solo bolos is getting embarrassing. Deep down you know exactly what her game plan is but like a 2 IQ fruit fly in front of a scolding light bulb you just can't help yourself and even the hooded midget employees know your ass is free to grab. 12 minutes in and your tier 2 tower is already being smoked like a joint at Snoop Dogg's house and your ranged top laner brain convinces you that this is your sign to pick another losing fight. No matter where you are, this evil, purple haired, same height as Tyler 1 regurgitating dragon handler will find you and hunt you down. Your team wants to give up, and so do you. After all she single handedly inverted your anus 600 times and they couldn't care less about you, so why would you care about them? You decide it's solo player PvE time where you are just a mobile midget murdering service. You start taxing other people's lanes, flying around the map sucking up these robed hood lums like you are a Hogwarts vacuum. You do nothing for 10 minutes but deep throat any wave you see like it's a cost playing delivery man's dick and your only fan's career is on the line. And sure enough, after the glow up of your life from officially not giving a shit about your teammates, you are strong enough to face your childhood bully again. You are now an 18, while bot laners are 12s, and despite the age gap being apparent you pull a drake and engage with that miner. No tower is safe, no objective won't be stolen, and no nexus can hold up to the power of playing single player League of Legends. Now playing the game on single player mode boils down to selecting and building your champs purely to push waves and killing towers, ignoring team objectives, never rotating for them, and doing anything it takes to get another tower down. It's similar to how the Baus plays and look how well it's going for him. Permanently banned. Your account received the following penalties. Oh, okay. But today I'm going to show how insane it can be and all the nice things your teammates will say about you as you are executing it. But the real mentally ill people in this game are the ones paying 500 bucks for an Ari skin. Which is why I'll be the first person to get the skin without paying for it by using Buff. Buff is a trusted software by Overwolf who owns all these apps that you probably already use that runs in the background when you are gaming. Think Vanguard except it's not kernel level malware and it doesn't sell data to China because it makes its money through advertisements and premium offers but the way it works is that you accumulate points simply by logging time playing your favorite games completing missions and doing what you would normally do. After a while you've accumulated enough points to hit the buff store where you redeem points for gift cards cool gaming shit and in-game prizes, with Riot RP being one of them so today I will launch my mission to use buff to single-handedly fund my $500 Ari skin, and you should too by getting it for free by using my link below. Alright so the best pick I found for this is Ziggs in the top lane as he takes towers better than Logan Paul takes crypto investors money and you can see in this example I'm against the leader of the Mud Hot clan. I'm in queue to receive a gank but the guy they send has a blind fold on so his aiming is suboptimal which results in a 20 health tentacle Tina getting out. He's red in the face chasing like a state certified dipshit but my plan is to secure the minion gold myself but I don't want my single player mode to be bumped up to fed enemy top difficulty so I let him douche dash to my body and then the uncoordinated shit fest continues in my lane. Lee Sin continues to prove my point that you should never put your trust in any teammate in this game but by the grace of the riot gods their Volibear forgets how to push his right click button and we kill. He wants to stay but I moved which means a fight is doomed but Lee is too blind to see that so he commits which results in a trade that's actually beneficial for me. 
I get a level advantage from sitting in lane and sure enough the sonic shitter arrives for an encore performance to redeem himself which goes well and then instead of scratching his back at grubs after he scratched mine in lane I stick to my plan by removing so many plates from this tower you'd think it was the squat rack after a Tyler one yelp session. Get up, get up. But here's the thing I greeted like an Enron executive in 2000 instead of backing so I was forced to attend Tentacle Hentai Land to which I thought I escaped because I was under the impression that tentacles leave this red indicator before they drop but this one surprise sneak attacked me so if this wasn't a bug then fuck me I guess but if it is a bug then a big fuck you to riot. That said Fiona from Shrek wasn't going to get away with that bullshit so I returned via Skybeam knocked her around and then ordered an Oppenheimer on her ass for the kill. To which I then ignored my jungler having some one-on-one -on -one time with theirs because A I think they'd make a cute baby and B I'm playing single player League of Legends so getting the tower and pushing the wave were important to me. Let the record show that the strategy isn't to neglect the team but just to put yourself first so I did rotate when it was convenient for me, whoopsie Mr. Lee, I said with glee as I grabbed another 300g, green eggs and ham. Anyways I now wanted to nuke a bot lane turret and I could give two shits if this was quote unquote not my lane so I hobbled my little Dexter's laboratory looking ass into their domain whipped a piss vial at the thick hipped chick and then proceeded to do what I came here for and that was tear down towers and any weaponized arcane crane game that thought he could make a difference in this world would be promptly shown otherwise. The next tower I'm gonna treat like a statue of a racist man in the 1800s and try to tear down is mid and no amount of pinging or crying from TF is gonna stop me because I'm playing my game and no teammate nor plasmatic wing ding is going to stop me. I know that this Andrew Tate energy I'm giving off is going to attract dick riders from all genders and species so I just welcome the company into my playground as we orgy the ogre and then I Amazon Prime another atom bomb for the right clicker with the BBL before securing the last of the tier 1 towers. I continue playing solo player just roaming around the map and soaking up waves when I can as I could give less than a third of a shit about what the rest of my team is doing as they are probably touching each other's nipples at bot side golems accomplishing nothing while I am knocking out solo missions like this is Xbox 360 Splinter Cell and my balls haven't dropped yet. Anyways I'm now strong enough to tax minion camps when I walk by which is some nice supplemental income for your boy but as I'm making a beeline to the bot lane I get caught up in a gang war. At first I'm like fine I will be a homie but the second the invite list starts growing and it doesn't feel beneficial for me to be there I'm out like bad gas after a chipotle burrito bowl with queso. Sure my team will be full of questions for me and sure after they get dragon and I'm still just pedal to the metal against more towers even if it comes at the cost of my own life I'm sure my behavior won't be popular but I'm done playing around this crayon eating community made from the bottom of the barrel of sperm cells and this is what works for me because when I do finally decide to attend a team fight no one is expecting my pocket Nagasaki so half of them are dead before I even arrive and then one more bouncy boy and two more are watching from black and white timeout. I then of course celebrate by I guess adopting a cat and vandalizing more of the enemy's property making sure to whip abilities in random directions to proc my lich bane as I avoid eye contact with Muddy Maria long enough to get the inhib. These silver mouth breathing degenerate door knob humpers still insist on wasting time so my contributions from now on consist of long range oppenheimers because my time is better spent in lane murdering midgets. I can now take towers in record breaking time as I've learned if I line up a demolish rune with bane of lich proc and my passive I can practically one tap the whole thing and then of course I'm going to trade my own life for another inhib because even though my own team is calling me mentally ill, I'm now single handedly responsible for us having two inhibitors. So I double down on this behavior teleporting to the one guy in the blue robed academy that applies himself and then I show the world that the wrong way to play this game feels so damn good as another death and some help from the roided robe wearers and their nexus is exposed. I have to admit that I did attend one team fight and the ult I hit was a spectacle I will be telling my grandmother about at the next thanksgiving table but the thing is I put my ass on the line to make this team fight sway in my team's favor until all that was left was my bot lane but you know what they did with the rift to themselves and an open nexus? Fucking nothing so I refused to die for the sake of my team and continue playing solo player as the next time there was a full team brawl in river with everyone in attendance I say foo foo that lame ass shit I'm taking my talents mid as I lead a single man parade straight into the base and nuke the nexus before anyone thinking I'm mentally ill could even react and I think the dick measuring contest in the post game report should tell you if this strategy was effective but I decided to try it on a different champ as well to provide you with another example. 
This one I play another Yordle with a fetish for blowing shit up and I'm against floating Aladdin who drastically underestimates the amount of health I can erase at level 2 and I immediately get the advantage. My 6th birthday hits before his and all I want to do is butt blast him into oblivion but every time I get close he's infecting me with space herpes which is pissing me off but I want to make my move before he learns how to do the soul suck 9000 so I do a Gucci flip flop flash it hit your bitch and my socks combo for the kill. This pattern continues as I'm farming on par with a drunk faker so every time my ult is up I'm parkouring over to deliver a dick in and then I use demolish and my kit to tickle the turrets right where they want it. My team comes mid but I'm not trying to catch Ligma from these inbred incels so I take my talents to the south beach where Tyler1 is just existing 3 levels below me more pushed up than a tiktoker's tits so I promptly remove him from my presence and then continue playing my own game bot. I push the wave and then act like I'm going to negotiate some deals with shopkeeper Boris but really it was all an evil ploy to launch a quick game of surprise you a dead bitch against 2015 Tyler1 which knocked him dead and left another tower wide open for the taking. Now because my teammates that rotated mid earlier are about as useful as the syphilitic aborted remains of a cousin's only gangbang they of course didn't get anything accomplished so when I came back I had to get a bit creative to get the job done before heading out. Sitting in a lane was tough at this point because my team was applying less pressure than a deflated hot air balloon so I instead knew that a smoking hot blonde sometimes walks this way to look at the monkeys so I intercepted her and cannonball cucked her back to base. My team is pinging for us to do Cloud Drake at this point but you haven't learned shit if you think I was heading there as I would rather dunk on this budget juggler once more before I guess everyone and their mother wanted to drop the mitts. Gosu ulted so naturally some of my autos were getting desk popped into minions as Corky continued to press on because his meninges are full of mountain dew so he dies and decides to flame me which is exhibit F of why I will never play for shitty league teammates again. I now have to deal with a tumbling twerp who got fed off the fat of the land aka the inting idiots on my team but luckily my KDA is worth being taken home to meet the parents so she gets dicked on and I charge all the way down top lane to take the base turret. It's not pretty but the plan is working but here's the thing. You can play single player all you want but if the high school dropouts with morning breath and bed head don't want to let you cook, it's still gonna end in sadness. Rav that totally could've carried that game out.